All right, Tom, finish off the show with rapid reactions. A lot of topics, a little bit of time. Take it away, Frank. Let's roll, baby. Jacksonville coach Urban Ma said he's he's yet to name his starting quarterbacks, which means the competition between Trevor Lawrence and Gardner Minshew will continue for now. With that said, Jay, do you believe there's a weir- a real quarterback competition going down in Jacksonville? No, uh, this is this is window dressing. I don't think anyone in the, in this, this country believes that Gardner Minshew is seriously challenging Trevor Lawrence for the <laughs> for the starting quarterback job. I think this is. This, this is pure window dressing. We, we, know, we know who's going to start week one. The Boston Celtics will retire Kevin Garnett's number five on March 13th. Uh, do you think KG accomplished enough in Boston to have his Celtics number retired? I think KG, Paul Pierce, and Ray Allen accomplished enough. You think I'm lying? Go look at Boston history. The gap between when, when Boston won the last, last won the championship to when they won that championship in, in 08. And then go look at what they had done after 08. I, I think, yes, absolutely, yes. More Celtic news as Boston has signed center Robert Williams to a four-year, $54 million deal. What, what's your thoughts on his contract, Jay? This is the first thing Boston has done since the trading deadline that I've liked. Uh, I think it's a good contract. I think it's absolutely projecting on what Robert Williams can do. Um, there, there is some injury re- risk, but I think Robert Williams is perfectly capable of outperforming this contract. Jets defensive end Carl Lawson ruptured his left Achilles tendon on Thursday and will miss the upcoming season. It's not a good sign for the Jets and Coach Robert Sala, is it? When the hell have we had a good sign from the Jets in like the last three years? Like, it's just a, another one for the, 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 the old Paul, as they say. Um... I feel bad for Robert Solis. He can't win for losing. And he hasn't even played a game yet when he really start losing. Like, you know, uh, sorry for him. Major League Baseball will attempt to build its build on its field of dream game success next season with the Cincinnati Reds and the Chicago Cubs playing in Iowa in August of 2022. It's a good idea, Jay. Should they keep this going? Yeah, I think they should keep it going. I mean, based on a graphic I saw, it was the most watched MLB regular season game, I believe, in like the past 16 years. So I think obviously it makes sense to try to keep it going. But I think they're going to need a lot more than just like pointing to one game during the season where they get all these eyes. They got to they got to continue to build on the sport and make it better as we uh, as we've discussed in previous episodes. Milwaukee Bucks superstar Giannis Antetokounmpo has purchased a stake in the Milwaukee Brewers. Chiefs quarterback Patrick Mahomes did a similar thing. Uh, Any idea who might be next to make a move like this? Uh, it it would have to be like uh, um like a young you you know who I thought could have done something like this it just didn't transpire yet I thought Zion Wilson had a chance to do this if he had a kind of pop when we thought he was gonna pop now nah, he kind of defizzled out a little bit I I thought he had a chance at that um um I had another name. I don't want to hold us up but I'm I'm gonna say Zion Williams for now um I, I thought he had a chance of doing something similar to that. And it didn't quite work out. Eagles rookie wide receiver Devontae Smith said he believed he is on the right schedule after playing 25 snaps in Thursday's preseason loss to the Patriots. The reigning Heisman Trophy winner missed much of training camp with an MCL injury. Your thoughts, Jay? Aaron Hurts is probably glad to see him, you know, looking looking all right and looking like he's ready to play because uh, without Devontae Smith, I think Jalen Hurts is going to have a – a really tough time this year of uh, finding open receivers. This evening, it's UFC Vegas 34, Canyon Ye versus Gastelum on ESPN, ESPN Plus at the UFC Apex in Las Vegas. The main event is a middleweight fight between the number three ranked contender Jared Canyon Ye versus the number nine ranked contender Kelvin Gastelum. Who you got, Drink? Uh, yeah, man, I'm taking Canyon in this one. Um, Kevin Gastelum, even though he's still in the top 10 of the division, he seemed to be fizzling out somewhat. Um, you would have gave me this fight a year ago. I probably would have took Gasolum, but he just don't seem to be the same fighter he was a year ago. And Cannon is one of those underrated fighters that you don't hear a lot about. I didn't even know he was number three in the division. Um, he's just kind of one of those um, slept on fighters. I'm going to take Cannon in this one. I think he's going to go the distance because, um, you know, I just don't think neither fighter is really like knockout material anymore. So I'm going to take Cannon in, the, in um, unanimous decision. In a radio interview with Bucks quarterback Tom Brady and Jim Gray, free agent wide receiver Larry Fitzgerald conceded he doesn't have he doesn't have the urge to play football right now. With that said, Jay, 
Does this end? Does this end the offseason speculation on whether or not Fitzgerald will play another season? I don't think it ends it uh, completely. I think there's still a chance where you could get the season rolling, and you know, you actually see games happening. Your team's maybe looking good, and I think that maybe could entice Larry Fitzgerald to come back, uh, maybe you know, early on mid-season and play for the Cardinals. Uh, but as of right now, you'd have to, you know, based on that comment, if you don't have the will, the urge to come out there, you know, especially in the physical sport of football, um, it could be it could be uh, lights out for Larry Fitzgerald and his Hall of Fame career. Last one tonight on Fox Sports pay-per-view at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. The former eight division champion and boxing top pay-per-view draw Manny Pacquiao returns to the ring to take on a top five fighter in the division. And that will be Jordanus, you guys, for the WBA welterweight championship of the world. Drink, if Pacquiao loses this fight, what will that do to his legacy? Well, it, it won't do much. Um, and maybe we might be saying Pacquiao need to retire. It's, it's about that time. Um, but it won't do much. You got to understand here. Um, they arguably Pacquiao beat a better fighter in his last fight with Keith Thurman. And then, you know, he beat Adrian Broner before that. You guys said somewhere, you know, maybe he might be looked at as, as a better fighter than Keith Thurman now because Keith Thurman hasn't fought since the fight with Pacquiao. But at the time, he wasn't. Um, and now with, with Pacquiao, I, and I got to give a lot of credit to Pacquiao. Another reason I don't think this impacts his legacy is this. He was willing to go against the, you know, what's considered the most dangerous guy in the welterweight division in Errol Spence Jr. Errol Spence, laceration on his eye kept him out of this match and then he turned around and said give me the next best the next best guy up that happened to be Yadonis you guys so with that said I don't think it will he's still gonna be a legend he's still gonna be a former eighth division champ he's still a hall of famer he's still the top guy when it comes to pay-per-view so no this loss would not impact Pacquiao's career he's still gonna be the GOAT to the Filipino people all right so that concludes this weekend edition of a drink of wisdom as always, like, listen, share, subscribe, and thank you for joining us. I'm Jay Watts. And I'm Nathan Drinker. And remember, make tomorrow better than today, and make today better than yesterday. And you know what we gonna do. We gonna holler at you until next time, baby.